In today's video, I'm going to cover BlackBerry stock because they reported their Q3 earnings for fiscal year 2024 yesterday in December 20th, 2023. Uh, I'm going to go over the conference call in terms of the most important points. I'm going to do a technical analysis towards the end of the video as well and basically share my thoughts. I did already go through the numbers. I'm going to go through the numbers again this time, but I'm, I already did a comparison, year over year comparison, comparison with street estimates. Uh, quarter after quarter comparison plus forward outlook uh, statement in terms of comparison with the Q4 for the next earnings. Um, all that stuff in the video previously, so it's going to pop up right about here if you want to check it out. And also if you want to re-listen to the conference call, it'll pop up right shortly after if you want to listen to the conference call right above as well. Um, but in the meantime, before I continue with all the points, uh, don't mind the chicken scratch basically, not chicken scratch, but in theory, hypothetically, these sentences might not make sense, but I'll break them down. These are really good points. I think the conference call went well, in my opinion, given that John G. Mateo, this is, he just became CEO, and this is his first conference call uh, for the company. So I, I don't think it was that bad, personally. Um, but in terms of um, the statement I was going to state, keep in mind I'm not a professional, so everything I do share is just my opinion. So please do your own due diligence and research before buying and selling. And I do own shares in BlackBerry stock, so keep that in mind as well. I try to stay as neutral as much as possible, um, but obviously just be aware because hypothetically I could be biased as well at the same time. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go over the numbers before I start the um, Q&A session, or not Q&A session, but the conference call plus the Q&A and all that stuff, just because you should be aware a little, little of the numbers. I'm not do, gonna do comparisons, but just to show. Total company revenue came in at 175 million. IoT came in at 55 million, cybersecurity came in at 114 million, licensing and other revenue came in at 6 million, non-GAAP basic earnings per share of 1 cent, and GAAP basic loss per share of 4 cents. So they beat street estimates, they had year-over-year -year, uh, uh, growth, quarter-over-quarter uh, -quarter growth. The downfall is the question is, why did the stock go down if that is the case? Uh, we closed at $4.10 before the earnings was reported, and then the next following day, today it closed December 2021, 2023, um, closed at $3.58, so a drop of almost 13% because the outlook. Unfortunately, the outlook for the company is um, not that great for the uh, Q4. So for Q4, total company re uh, revenue is going to be coming in roughly about 150 to 159 million, which is a downfall, so it's a quarter of a quarter drop. Um, but it's flatlined with the next quarter though, uh, with the Q4. I2 revenue at 62, 60, 66 million. This is actually really good. I'm gonna go over the points as well because they mentioned something about it. Uh, cyber uh, security revenue at 83 to 88 million. This is one of the downfalls. Licensing and other revenue approximately at 5 million. So unfortunately, because of this Q4, the stock took a hit. And if you remember John Chen, the previous CEO, he was pretty much hyping up Q4. Um, it's obviously nothing's guaranteed. They always state, state in the conference call that don't put uh, any reliance on the guidance that they provide. Um, but at the same time, it seemed like Q4 was gonna be good. And since Q3 was pretty big from what we saw, it actually beat everything, expectations, growth, all stuff. Uh, we, were, we would almost only assume that the next quarter is gonna be even better, hopefully, hopefully, right? But unfortunately, that is not the case. Um, so now, in terms of the points, and then I'm going to go to the do the technical analysis after. So John DiMatteo will work on separating the cybersecurity and IoT into two standalone divisions, no longer no longer going to IPO. So the IPO is off the table for the time being. It's not not it's not fully off the table. It's just not going to happen at the moment. Um, it's just going to be creating two standalone companies, not companies, but like almost like subsidiaries divisions. And you could treat BlackBerry as a holding company and then cybersecurity and IoT as subsidiaries. All internally, there's not gonna be an IPO for one of them or IPO for a portion of them, but that's how it's gonna be treated to, to get revenue growth. But he touches base more on this in the Q&A section that I have covered a total of six slides total, oh, technically five. So IoT portion of the business is actually growing and was the best quarter ever. And uh, next quarter is even bigger, which is awesome. Um, the reason why is so if you go to BlackBerry Investors Relations website, you could pull up the financial reports. And I pulled up all of them that showed all the, um, the IoT portion of the business, which I believe was Q1 fiscal year 2022 was the first year. And um, BlackBerry, uh, the IoT revenue portion of the business was never more than 55 million. So this was the highest one that they've ever had. And the significant portion of that is that the next quarter is actually even bigger at 62 to 66 million. Um, with that, which is great. So it shows that currently this quarter we had growth for IoT business, and then next quarter we have even more growth. 
And the best part about that is the statement he made after, which was the next quarter is going to be the biggest one, which we see with 62 to 66. Even with the auto hit, John G. Mateo mentioned that, like he said, even with the auto hit, um, and he said, even with this number being conservative. So he said the guidance numbers that they provided, the 62 to 66 million, that's a conservative number. And this includes the auto hit as an estimate as well. And um, we're still seeing growth quarter after quarter. So IoT business is doing great. It's cash flow positive. We're seeing growth right now. And next quarter is even more growth, even with the headwinds. That's awesome stuff. That's great for the business. And then BlackBerry Ivy hasn't even fully took force yet in terms of being a portion of IoT and, or being a big portion of IoT business. So there's only so much, like there's there's a lot of room to grow in terms of that division. So that's awesome stuff. Now for the cybersecurity portion, yes, it's taking a hit um, next quarter, but it looks like it'll be back up the quarter after. He mentioned that the, uh, the next quarter, which we see that's gonna be 83 to 88 million. Again, this quarter was 114 million. He says it's more like it's gonna stabilize slash the quarter after that, which is um, the Q1 earnings, which will be uh, reported, Q1 earnings for fiscal year 2025, which will be reported on June, 2024. He says, then we'll be back up to growth. So it's stabilizing slash took a hit, and then it'll be back up to growth the following quarter after Q4. Um, the problem is about this, it's uh, it's conflicting with other kind of information a little bit, not necessarily because yeah, it could be bouncing up to growth, but how much growth, not that much potentially because they need to be cash flow positive. IoT portion is cash flow positive. Cybersecurity is not cash flow positive. And when asked, they said, we'll let you know next quarter, or we'll get back to you next quarter when they're asked in the QA portion, which I'll go over as well. But then it kind of sounded like the, it would take about 12 months. So this is more of a six month time frame, but to be cash flow positive, which is more, the most important part, that's going to take longer. But I'll touch base that base. I'll touch base on that in the Q&A portion. Uh, one great thing is their margins are high. So 84% for the IoT portion of the business and 68% for the cybersecurity portion of the business. So that's awesome. And the company as a whole seems like it's 73% um, in terms of their margin. So that's great. Um, I'm going to touch base on that as well for my Q&A portion when they talked about cost cutting and all that stuff. They mentioned a bunch of new design wins, but then they also stated that Ivy is growing. Ivy design win announcement possible at CES, which is great. So if you go to BlackBerry Investors Relations website, you could see that in terms of events coming up, BlackBerry Investor briefing at CES 2024, Wednesday, January 10th, 2024, 4 p.m. Eastern time. But CES goes from the January 9th to January 12th, if I'm not mistaken. So it could be announced relatively soon basically we have like a three four weeks whatever it might be um actually no three weeks i, I guess so that's pretty awesome hopefully it gets announced it kind of sounded like it was a pretty pretty decent size of a design win for um, blackberry ivy which is great um and then at the same time they didn't say this but in my opinion if it doesn't happen during the cs it doesn't necessarily mean it won't happen after but i'm not sure if there's a time frame for it or not who knows uh, they talked about big government contracts. So obviously we know more contracts are on the way for government contracts, but they seemed like they were big government contracts from, I think they might've used the word big. I can't remember exactly, but they seemed like for sure that there was more big government contracts on the way. Uh, cybersecurity lower next quarter to do a reassessment. Okay, yeah. So cybersecurity is lower next quarter. Like we showed uh, was what, 83 to 88 million or something like that. When we looked at the outlook, 83 to 88, it was because due to um, large government contracts, in the pipeline that are coming in the pipeline, either due to reassessment, they had to reassess the contracts, resize them, um, re like in terms of timing issues. And basically there were some contracts also, but they're small contracts, so I guess it doesn't affect it too much, that some small contracts were um, essentially, like didn't follow through and they kind of dropped. And then in terms of cash, some people I noticed are were worried about in terms of cash and will they go bankrupt and all that stuff. Cash is lower due to them paying off the debt, right? They paid off $215 million of debt. And then they also refinanced a portion of $150 million of debt all the way till they have to pay it off till February or may, might be extended till May of 2024. And the interest rate on that is at 1.75%, pretty much free, literally free money. Um, it was a great deal on the, that part for them. Um, but if you look at what is gonna say in terms of financials, so let's say they pay off the $150 million, right? They have currently, um, right about here, if you look at the uh, earnings report, 
Um, you can see November 30th, 2023. So as of November 30th, 2023, they have $271 million, right? In terms of cash, like in terms of liquid cash, it's 210 million. So even if you don't count the other cash equivalents, you just take the 210 million minus 150, you still left with $60 million. Now, in terms of Q&A, they, uh, they address some kind of financing information. So I'll go over that as well later on. Um, but I think they're completely fine. I don't see bankruptcy on the table. Um, at the same time, if they deliberately want to go bankrupt, they could always obviously go deliberately bankrupt just by spending recklessly and so on and so forth. But obviously, I don't expect them to deliberately want to go bankrupt. So I don't see any issue of them going bankrupt, in my opinion, whatsoever. But again, this is my opinion, but I'm not, and I'm not a professional. So please do your own due diligence and research. But I think they're completely fine. Um, and if, from the sound of it from the Q&A, it looks like they're not expecting to pay this off completely 150 right off the bat they're looking to refinance um in a way but i'll touch base on that as well it's not necessarily bad they're i'll, I'll touch base on that q a though it's actually not too bad it's pretty good so and then looking to save on costs um the reason why i'm mentioning this though is so if you remember um i'll just finish the statement so almost sounds like he's possibly going to do some layoffs in terms of john g mateo possibly might do some layoffs the reason why i mentioned that is because if you remember john chen john chen uh, is not a fan of layoffs which is great for the workers. Um, but uh, there was a layoff of the first first um, a year that he got in because the previous management decided to do layoffs. So he just basically followed with it. But ever since then, till the time he finished, I don't believe there was any more layoffs at all uh, in BlackBerry stock. The thing is though, layoffs are good for the shareholders because it cuts costs. And John G. Mateo didn't mention layoffs, but it almost sounded like there was like um, a lot of redundancies in teams and so on and so forth. So it almost sounds like he might be doing layoffs to cut costs. Again, not great for the workers though, but it's good for the stock itself because it does cut costs. But just wanted to mention that, just FYI, because this is a different CEO and um, potentially that might be one way for cost cutting to save cost. But doesn't guarantee that he'll do that just because later on he does address in the Q&A something more about like, the company's already been cutting costs. We got to start driving revenue, but I'll touch base on that later on in the Q and A. So now, in terms of Q and A, number of contracts are uh, timing related in terms of being affected, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, but it seems like there's another U.S. contract and a German contract potentially. But predominantly, the German one wasn't 100% clear, but the U.S. one was. It sounded like it was pretty big, a little bit potentially, and it sounds like it was another one that's on the way, which is pretty awesome. The government contracts are usually. Um, pretty pretty long and pre, pretty uh, beneficial in terms of revenue. So that's great if that is the case. Uh, case. And like I mentioned earlier, some uh, some more small ones ended up not like falling through, not falling through. So it's not a big deal for that. And then he was asked, John G. Mateo was asked about the reason for the standalone split for cybersecurity and IoT portion of the business. And they said, is it basically to sell it off, like sell off the cybersecurity portion or something? Or what's the plan? What's the reasoning for splitting them off? And making them a standalone companies kind of thing. Not companies, but divisions, right? Um, and John Jimmy Teo answered by saying, it helps us focus uh, the revenue growth. So we could focus more on the revenue growth on each division by themselves. But it, um, but it could be for any outcome, either just revenue growth or to do an IPO later on or sell a portion of the company, whatever it might be. So basically nothing's off the table hypothetically, but the main focus right now is to do a split and then to... Um, focus on revenue growth. That's the main thing. And he addresses revenue growth later on again. Uh, not addresses it, but more like reiterates he wants to be focused on revenue growth, which is awesome. Uh, in terms of re remaining debt of $150 million, they, they stated that they were looking to uh, looking for finance finance options. So that, that is one possible avenue. They also said they could pay it off with cash on hand at the same time, but mainly looking to be cash flow positive in both businesses to pay it off soon. So the, the theme I got from this is it sounds like they're aware, like as they should be, because it's not a secret or anything, that they, they need to drive up revenue um, and be cash flow positive. But I like the fact that they're, they, they're pretty much stating it a good amount of times where they're aware of it and they're working towards that. But mind you, though, John Jenton did say that too as well before in previous conference calls, um, but nothing did really happen at the same time. So we'll see. I... Personally, I did like the flow of the conference call. Um, it was pretty decent for the first time for him, John Jimmy Teo being a CEO and first conference call for the company. And then for the next points, IoT fundamentals is very strong. 
and very well positioned and a very strong backlog. This was pretty awesome actually. So in terms of IoT, we see that it's growing, um, it's doing very well. And he mentioned that uh, it almost like they don't have to do any more hypothetically because they're pretty much far ahead it seems like. And they have a very strong backlog, which is awesome because that's just basically future bookings in terms of revenue coming down the line, pipeline. Um, but that's great stuff. Hopefully next quarter though, they, uh, they uh, hopefully next quarter they will tell us when they expect to see uh, cybersecurity will be cash flow positive. So uh, there was asked when will it be cash flow positive, and they said we'll get back to you next quarter. Uh, again, IoT is already and has been uh, cash flow positive for quite some time, so that's pretty good. And then cybersecurity and IoT uh, moved to standalone in somewhat uh, mid 2024. So he said hopefully 20, mid 2024 there'll be um, two standalone divisions. There might be some things that are not fully split yet, but hoping mid 2024. John G. Mateo contract has an incentive in it for him to get the company cash flow positive by fiscal year 2025, which is pretty interesting because uh, just FYI, this is reported on June 2024. So that's pretty much six months from now. So in six months from now, uh, there's incentive for him if he's successful on making the company cash flow positive. Again, cybersecurity side is cash flow positive. That only, not cybersecurity, sorry. The IoT side is cash flow positive, but the cybersecurity is not. Um, so if he if he's very uh, willing to work hard as much as he can, I guess, there's not really much, there's a lot he can do, but it's mainly the sales side and driving up revenue. So if, if they somehow get that, there's an incentive for him uh, if he succeeds. And then, but the problem is later on, he gets asked something, I'll explain, but it almost seems like it might be 12 months, not six months, FYI. So I think he might most likely going to miss out on this incentive, but it's uh, interesting to know about that um, potential. And then asked about selling assets and said he's open to selling assets, but mainly looking to drive growth to getting cash flow positive for, uh, for the company as well. So he was basically asked about this and he was more focused on saying, yeah, I don't mind selling assets, but... Like, let's focus on revenue uh, because at the same time, there's only so much you could sell and cut costs. And he addresses it here. So it seems like when John G. Mateo said the company as a whole already focused on cost cutting before, and he already knows, like the company already knows that they have to cut costs. Um, but he said what they need to do and want to focus on is revenue growth rather than just too much on cost cutting. Um, in my opinion, I, I agree with him because given how high the margins are already, uh, revenue focus is definitely the way to go. Because if your margin's that high, like how much, it doesn't matter how much cost you cut, if your revenue is only like $10, then you're gonna be like, your cost is like, let's say $2. Yeah, you could get the full $10, but who cares? My main focus would be to get, to grow to $100 and $1,000 and so on and so forth. And he seems like he gets that. And the main focus should be revenue growth, which is what he stated, which is awesome. Uh, seems like though his vision is more than uh, 12 months from now in terms of being cash flow positive from what he stated again uh all right not again sorry what i want to state though is this is me reading into the words he chose to say uh and how he said them he didn't specifically say this just fyi i just want to make that clear um so he will not hit the q1 fiscal year 2025 which is reported on june 2024 um as his quarter target uh, that was stated earlier just fyi so um, hopefully hits it in six months. That'd be awesome. But just FYI, it sounds like it might be 12 months. So for those ones that are want quick returns on their investment, it's going to take some time. It sounds like as it has already taken some time, just FYI. Now, in terms of the stock, um, looking at it in terms of high level technical analysis is not really in depth in depth, but I think it's beneficial to see because you could see the question is, is the stock going to go lower or can it go lower? Because uh, I obviously can, because we need to see revenue growth. But the question is, what's the first level of support hypothetically that if it does go lower? Again, we close at three dollars and fifty-eight cents the day after the earnings was reported, and it was a negative thirteen percent drop. If you see from my videos before, we had a downward trend resistance line dating back since two thousand eight, um, and then multiple times it bounced, uh, got knocked down as resistance from twenty eighteen January to pretty much uh, April twenty nineteen. And then we bounced off as support. This was during BlackBerry Ivy. It reported the partnership with Amazon and Aya BlackBerry to create BlackBerry Ivy. Spiked up and came down, bounced as support in December of 2020. And then we bounced off support a bunch of times. Not clean bounces, some of them, but some of them like here was pretty much completely clean bounce right here in May of 2022. And then we bounced as of recent again too on October 16th, potentially, uh, 
uh, October 16th, 2023. So this downward trend resistance slash support line is still active. And then plus we have right about here a flat line support level at three the low three dollars. So it pretty much intersects at the low three dollars. It could be three dollars clean potentially somewhere be from when I checked it was like three twelve, three eleven, all that stuff. But it could be clean three uh, three dollars nonetheless. Um, and you could, could it go lower? Yes, it always could go lower. But this drop right here because it goes lower than three dollars is because it was during COVID. So if you see all this, the whole entire drop, this is March of 2020, and it goes lower than $3. But again, this was during the COVID when pretty much everything was crashing and dying. And I visually drew in the pen line, I'll race it soon so you can see though. Um, but if it were to drop down to $3, it just essentially dropped down and hopefully bounces back up and we could continue um, potentially a run up. It's hard to tell, but unfortunately, if you look at the uh, MACD line, which is right here indicates buying and selling powers and all stuff in terms of or the the move of is it more towards buying and selling it's showing selling obviously we can see from today too overall um but given that and the trajectory what it's going down because we haven't seen we've seen revenue growth this quarter which is great but the projected for future revenue growth it's like a decline essentially we could go lower just fyi um, but I am a long-term investor. I do believe in the company. I think we're going to ultimately go up, but that's my opinion. But just FYI, if we do go lower, the support level that I want to show, just basically in terms of support, is the low $3, just so that way you know and you're aware of it. Um, but yeah, that's basically the whole entire video. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If you have any questions, though, feel free to ask, and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Um, and that's basically it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider dropping a like. It helps the channel, so thank you so much for that. If you want to be notified when I do next time upload or stream some of the uh, conference calls and all stuff, consider subscribing so you'll be notified when I do upload those videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.